All right, Rob. Let's um, let's have a chat about how you've been going over the last week. So I haven't, I haven't, I haven't been on call with you this week because I've been busy. Sorry, but um, how how did you go? Um, so this week I did book a win. I believe I believe it was very small. Um, let me check actually real quick. Yeah, yeah, I booked uh. Yeah, I booked like a one buy-in win this this week. It was like very small, um, which is, I mean, that's good. I'm happy with that. Uh, I did run quite a bit below EV. I ran a couple of buy-ins below EV. Um, yeah, it's two or three buy-ins below EV. And I'm below EV on the challenge, which is interesting because we have been running it twice. And uh, I've just been getting a bit unlucky in the all-ins. And the four-bet pots. I've been getting killed in four-bet pots. I'm down like seven buy-ins this week in four bet pots, which is very frustrating because those are obviously, I mean, four bet pots are going to be a lot more luck than skill. I think just, there's such a high variance. There's so much in the middle. It's like, oftentimes it's just like you have a pair and the money goes in and hope you're good. So four bet pots have not been treating me well, but everything else has been going pretty well. Been, um, I felt like I've been making some, like quite a few hands uh, this week, but besides how I've been running, uh, Brandon seems to be playing like significantly better. Uh, he's he's almost forced me back entirely to like uh, a near GTO preflop strategy because he's his three bet frequencies have skyrocketed over the past week. Um, I think you'd find that quite relevant because it's. I've, I've been getting through bed a lot and I've also been getting iced it a lot and it could be an attempt from him to pump up the variance given we're halfway through when he's down at this point, 23 buy-ins. Uh, so it could be that, or he could have just finally run a preflop sim and looked at it, which I mean, maybe, uh, but yeah, his, I I'm I can show you uh, real quick. Uh, over the past week, his three bet frequency was twenty five percent, which is which is too high. Um, so he shifted from not three betting nearly enough to three betting way too much. Um, outside of that, he's also he's also uh, not been five betting me that much. I've noticed which is interesting. So, and, and his three bet range construction seems to have shifted significantly uh, from like, you know, hands that should basically never three bet to hands that probably should three bet. And so it's been, it's been, um, it's been interesting because he's, he's completely flip-flopped it seems. Um, but I think, uh, I think past few days, we've both been playing a lot closer to GTO because he came out at the beginning of the week, three betting me a lot. And then I think today, I'll check where his three bet percentage was today. Three bet, uh, it's 20, 28%, Jesus Christ. That could be uh, card distribution related, but I mean like still, that's, that's a lot. But yeah, he's been three betting me a lot this week. He's been three betting me with enough garbage, enough garbage. And uh, he's especially been attacking my big opens, which is interesting. So I, I have started shifting more of my strong hands into the big opens. And then I three bets, and then I four bet, and then I lose the four bet pot uh, somehow. But yeah, that's how it's been going uh, pre-flop at least. So he's, he's shifted significantly, and he shifted very quickly. It wasn't like a gradual shift. It was like start of this week, I noticed almost immediately, and then... Well, it's like, well, it could just be one session, card distribution, whatever. But it's been like the past five sessions, he's been three betting very aggressively. So he's also, um, I think post-flop, he's, he's gotten a lot sharper. Uh, I think, I will say, I think he's floating my flop C-bets in three bet pots. As long as it's a small C-bet, he's, he's like floating almost range. I don't think I got a single small C bet through, which is fine. You just bet bet flop and then barrel the turn more often, which is sort of what I've been doing. But 
Yeah, it was um that's a lot of sea bets. But other than that, I mean I feel like I, I didn't run that bad this week and I only won I feel like I ran pretty good and I only won like a buy-in, which is kind of disappointing. But yeah, a lot of that was just attributable to the four bet pots and losing like almost every single one. So that's the rundown. All right, so I have a buy in. He's three bit more, four bit more. I mean, it sounds like a lot of card attribution, honestly. So I wouldn't worry mm -hmm. too much about it. I mean, sure, strategy probably changed a bit, um, but I don't think it's changed as quickly as you think it has. It's probably changed quite slowly, and it's just card distribution has caught up. And so, like, prior, prior to this week, you know, his strategy had, had already changed. That the card distribution just wasn't showing it, and now it has. Mm hmm Okay, so it feels yeah, like it's changed a lot very quickly, but mm -hmm. it's most likely that he ran this, you know, pre-top sim has been studying it for the past few weeks, and now it's starting to show because the card distribution is showing it, right? Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Um, which is which is what 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 we actually probably could have uh, suspected was the case. They started off the challenge not really knowing what's going on, then he started to run some sims, and has been studying those sims. And now the card distribution show, is showing up. So in that case, probably um, these partial exploit sims are probably better than the max exploit sims now. And um, falling back to, to GTO type sims um, is probably going to be better. Okay. Uh, let's... Yeah. It, it's seeming as though um, as the match is going on, we're just going to have to revert more and more back to, to GTO. Yeah, that's, that's, that's fine. Um, let me open up some of these um, GTO sims that I ran. Uh, so this one is part exploit. Um, there's also some GTO ones. So this is a GTO one. Mm -hmm. Wait, GGI just mean that um, it's unlocked, so I just I just run unlocked. Okay. Um, yeah. Meaning that there's there's no there's no locks in, in the tree. Um, and then there's also a partial exploit for this one as well.
Okay. So this is with you in the in the big blind. 82% is what you should be opening in the small blind. Mm -hmm. Once open it to two and a half. This is with your three sizes. So um I made I made a change. So instead of going to twelve and a half, we'll just go um nine, twelve, and fifteen, just so that you know it's separated by three blinds each, and they can have this, you can have the same buttons both in position and a position. Great. Um yeah. Is this a hundred big blinds? I assume. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Do we have um the hundred and fifty big blinds in in the works? Yeah. So that that that'll be running that 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 that'll, that'll uh, run this week. Um. So. All right, so look at the unlock ones first. Uh, real quick, I do want to say, um, for some reason, there's been a lot more deep poker. I wonder, it, it, it seems as though ACR has fixed the glitch somewhat, where when you get up and sit back down, you have to buy in for the same amount now. I think it fixed the glitch. So there's there's likely going to be some more deep play. Um, in the works, uh, which okay. is not because of variance, but it's it's fine. All right, so I'll increase the variance a little bit, um, and probably increase the urgency. Yeah, we need to run the um, deep deeper stack pot. So I'll run I'll run one fifty for you. Mm -hmm. um Great. so here yeah, this is unlocked and this is uh symmetric post up as well meaning that you don't really have um, a post up advantage in this particular tree mm -hmm. um <clears throat> so this is sort of what it looks like 14.1 bb and ev um plenty of calling still this uh big size is used very sparingly but you notice um, the hands at like the top of the range, like ace king offsuit, tens jacks queens, ace and kings. Like they're they're using it fairly often compared to the rest of the hands. The rest of the hands not barely using it at all. So just 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 pay pay attention to to which hands are sort of more than ten percent, and then like um, incorporate those hands into your strategy a little bit more. Mm -hmm. This big size. Um, when you move over to uh, the exploitative version of it. Right. Um, a little bit less, I mean, opening a bit more, um, and then using the big size a little bit more. And then, you know, just like the, the big size here has got uh, a lot more of the strong hands in it. So the reason why this is the case is that here, this part exploit is exploiting the fact that he's um, basically three betting the same range against each um, of your open sizes, mm -hmm. uh, except for, except he three bet slightly different. Uh, Bet sizes. If that is the case, if it's rebetting a different range, if it's rebetting the same range, but slightly different sizes, then yeah, you just put your big hands in, in your strong open size. Uh, so big yeah, hands in yeah. the big open size and, and just to kind of avoid them in, in the small open size, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, over the sample that we have, like he's under defending against the small open sizes anyway, at least he was. Um, we'll see what that is over the next uh, few sessions. Uh, but basically, if if you feel like he's three betting you a lot against your big size, you just put your strong hands into the big size and have a very polar um, opening range for the big size, right? Mm -hmm. So like here, you notice like you got tens plus ace king queen jack suited there, um, ace queen yeah. suited in in the big size at much higher frequency. You just open it up, you get um, you get three bet. You're just going for a four bet, very high frequencies here. So this is sort of like twenty five ish percent four bet frequency, which is huge. Yeah, well. um, 
And uh, yeah, you just talk about like crazy and you just rip it in with Queen Jack suited, tans, ace queen offsuit, ace queen offsuit. Um, so yeah, don't be afraid to just like jam it in with a hand like Queen Jack suited. Um, like if you notice, like Queen Jack suited both makes it into like four bed jamming ranges and like min four bed ranges. Like here, Queen Jack offsuit is making it into the min four bed range um, at mm -hmm. full frequency. So like Queen Jack works pretty well because um it plays it plays pretty well against um Ace King blocks Kings and sorry box uh, Queens and Jacks blocks Ace Queen. Blocks Ace yeah, and Jack. It, it's flipping against tens and it's doing all right against Ace King. Exactly. Um. Yeah. So if you so if you get through it, you know, it's like in Queen Jack offsuit, even though it's not huge. Um. Uh. In the range to begin with, it usually does like to fall bet. So, um, let's look at the GTA one. This one, uh, GTA one, say if and mean you get three bet here in the four bet, um, range queen check offsuit, uh, is going for the for the four bet a fair amount of the time, right? Here, yeah, 30% of the time, queen check offsuit is going for the four bet, um. So yeah, lots of um, good reasons to to for it. Um, queen jack also queen jack suited, and if you go for the big size, yeah, uh, raised here in mean, queen jack offset just goes for the uh, four bed jam in position at sixty percent frequency. Um, in, in the range, it's not a huge huge uh, portion of the range, but you know, you can you can just rip it in like the the hands like queen jack also um, in heads up is pretty strong. You can just five bit uh, four bit jam. Um, so I'll give you these two, uh, unlocked, uh, unlocked and part exploit. Uh, they're slightly different post slop trees, so I don't know. I'll probably name them wrong. Uh, but anyway, just want to keep up to date. I would just say this is version seven, um, where we've got the unlock sim, which is when you're both the same uh, post slop. And here is part exploit, which is where he's um, uh, slightly uh, deviating in terms of him having the same favorite range for different sizes, and you have a slight post slop advantage. Uh, okay, and then this one, version six unlocked. Um, this one, uh, no, no post slop advantage for other player. Um, Preflop is uh, identical. So here you've got uh, 9, 12, and 15 big blind uh, three bit sizes. Uh, you notice that this uh, big three bit sizes, uh, the big three bit sizes used much higher frequency with like ace king offsuit, tens, jacks, uh, queens. So like, don't be afraid to, to use it. And then, especially if we move over to the, uh, the exploit. Version of it, you got Ace King at sixty percent, um, Jacks at forty percent. So and like none of the Ace King suited being put into the big uh, three bit size. This is what the big three bit size looks like. Um, where Jacks tens nines Queens heavy Ace King offsuit Ace Queen offsuit into the big three bit size um, as a partial exploit. Um, and that's just I mean anything that's a that's a partial exploit is. Um, uh, an extension you can think of as, as sort of like an extension of the GTO. Um, like it's, it's the GTO has, you know, differences in polarity and then the partial exploit is going to extend that polarity even further. Um, so uh, probably totally fine to, to go for this uh, partial exploit stuff. Um, so here 2.6% doubling up to 5% um, in the big uh, three bet size. So if you make it be three bet, um, here I've locked the folding uh, frequency and the calling frequency to something that I think he might probably go for against his big three bet, um, and then him forwarding a little bit, a little bit at a high frequency, um, which he has been doing in the past. But I think his forward frequency started to drop or return back to to to, to normal. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, if if he if he sort of rips it in with whatever range, it's um calling it. You got this GTO calling frequency. Mid four bit. Mm -hmm. uh, here you just rip it in forty percent frequency. Um, so yeah, pr pretty pretty well defended. Um, 
favorite range. And despite the fact that he's um, over forwarding. So yeah, you can um, have a play around with it, take a closer look, um, take a closer look at the exact frequencies the hands are being allocated to the to the big size in this part exploit sim. Um, like you, you'll you notice Ace-King basically never makes it into the big size. And um, so Ace-King suit never makes it into the big size. And um, Ace-King offsuit doesn't never makes it into the small size uh, here 1.9%. So there's there's already a split between the ace kings, um essentially mm -hmm. like ace king suit versus ace king offsuit um is is has uh basically ace king suit always in the small size much much higher frequency ace king offsuit always in the big size much higher frequency, um which uh, is not as obvious in the GTO version of it, uh, yeah, where you know you got ace king suited. I mean ace king suit still never makes it into the big size, but ace king offsuit. Makes it much higher frequency than the small size, so mm -hmm. that, that 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 kind of dynamic where certain hands make it into the big size versus the small size, the suited version makes it into the big size. Uh, so it's the suited version makes it into the small size, and the offset version makes it into the big size. Like that, that happens. Uh, Ace king, Ace queen, offset, you know, Ace jack, offset, etc. Um, and so you just have to pay play close attention to, to the frequencies because the the range will will be built around those certain hands, um, even though it's only a five percent. Um, of of the of the total range, uh, it ends up being very heavy in like those hands that we talked about, like here you know, the the queens, jacks, tens, nines, eights, ace queen, also ace king also. Um, and then when you get down to the smaller size, you have much more of the suited hands. So here a lot of the suited hands make it into the small size, um, and much higher frequencies. Ace jack suited, king, king queen suited, ace queen, ace king. King Jack, Queen Ten, S Nine into the into the um, the small three bet size, and then when you do get four bet, like you'll be um, flooding all of those suited hands against the four bet, um, flooding S's against the four bet, um, and mm -hmm. then you'll have this min five bet size with uh, kings, basically. Uh, you just rip it in with like queens, and like the S King suited, S Queen suited, King King Queen suited, S Queen off suited. Um, so yeah, the min. Uh, five bit, uh, five bit size like this. Um, he'll like rip it in, and like you'll stamp off with kings. Um, like your 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 range will be very like the calling range will be very kings heavy, and like tens and jacks will obviously call it off. Ace queen suited will obviously call it off. Um, but it's mostly like pocket kings in this uh, particular range. Mm -hmm. Your um min min your min five bit range is very kings heavy like if you notice like the, the total number of combos um here 81 percent of 1.8 combos 22 percent of 2.5 combos um etc so it's already very very pocket heavy um you don't really have too many like bluffs like the bluffing uh frequency when you do min five bet right is exactly sort of these hands here um these hands here which fold uh yeah. King Jack, his Jack, his ten, King Queen, offsuit at low frequency. So yeah, basically you can min five bet with a very uh, value heavy range, not too too many bluffs. Obviously you throw in a couple of bluffs here and there, um, but it's mostly going to be set around uh, kings here yeah, when you do through bets more and do get full bet. Um, the min five bet doesn't really uh, appear uh, too often when you get through bet. Uh, so when you get four bit to a bigger size, if you get four bit to a bigger size, um, so here here to to, to fifty two, which is uh, twenty six big blinds, twenty six big blinds, you just rip it in. But um, when you're getting four bit down to twenty three big blinds, then yeah, you can squeeze in a, a min four bit size. And notice here the min four bit size is um, less than uh, less than forty blinds in total. Yeah. Right. Okay. So what I'll do, uh let's see part exploit. There's the GTA version. Um And uh, yeah, 
the unlock version, part exploit. And like you notice that the part exploit um isn't isn't that much different in terms of EV. Like here it's only 0.1 BB or 0.2 BB um in terms of EV for for you. That's because the, the exploit that we uh, that is is available here is um not that uh not that strong. Um in, in the fact that it's we, we don't we don't really know how far is DBA anymore. And so a lot of these mm -hmm. part exploits um, aren't going to create a huge amount of, of EV, um, especially when you're out of position. When you're in position, yeah, okay, here yeah, this is going from unlocked at 14.1 or 14 to you, to, you, to 17.6, so you're getting to uh, 3.5 billion EV. Um, assuming that he does 3-bet, you know, the same range. Here's, I put it at 17.3%. That might be higher. That might be 18% now. Um, We'll, we'll just play, play it play it by but yeah you can always drop back to the gto uh, version so the unlocked version like if you, even if you open big like you should be at three winning so 17.5 percent against your big open size mm -hmm. um so the fact that you know we have here in the part exploit uh you open small and he's going to 17.3 or you open big he's going to 17.3 probably is uh through being a little bit too little and then against your small size um in the unlock sim like you should be going to twenty point three percent frequency there. Um, there's also the question about whether or not he's um, adjusted well enough to, like your limp, Rubert. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like the answer is no. I feel like that's the spot where he's still quite weak. Yeah. But here I are putting this in version eight anyway. I'm here putting this in. Uh, 40, 70, and 100, which is the same as 9, uh, 12, and 15. And then there's part exploit sim. Um, I'm going to go the 12 and a half and the 15. But I will I can rerun it later um, when we have more information about, you know, how we think he's, he's playing again, the limp pots. Um, like here... This is the this is the, the strategy if you ever make it into into a limp pot with you know one of these certain hands here, which really only limp at very low frequency, um, and you do get isolated. Uh, you just cl basically click it back, and like you, you should you will struggle a lot. Um, like a lot of these certain hands, which is play really well um, in position against a wider range. Um, with the ability to check back and he won't be able to defend too too well against that. He, he should fall about you and you, you can just call um, kind of deal. So there you've got the three different sizes and notice here in the unlocked sim, like here there's 15 BB in position. Um, ISO size is being used at a pretty pretty high frequency. So here this is the, the, the strategy for the in position um, uh, Limp three bet for the big size, like it's very very polar. Here yeah, for the small size, um, still relatively polar. You basically limp and then pot it back um, in position, expect him to to jam on you a lot. I don't think he's really going to be doing that. Um, limp three bet, yeah, nineteen percent uh, orbit frequency. I think he's been only before betting at around fifteen percent in these spots. Um, and he's probably overfolding significantly as well. So notice, like here, limp raise fold thirty six point seven. Like he's folding at like fifty percent. Um, so the previous exploit sim, where like you were just limp raising everything, everything that you limped basically, except for the trash, mm -hmm. um, that should probably still work, uh, given he's got some uh, issues in the limp in the limp pot. Like he probably decided it as. As in depth as he as he probably has the other stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll send you these sims. Um, I'll take a deeper look at the hands and I'll take a look at stuff that you're concerned about. I think it's just the fact that he's created a new strategy a few weeks ago and it's just started to catch up uh, in in the data that we're seeing. I don't think it's I don't think it's the case that he's suddenly changed over one weekend. I think it's he's he's 
noticed what you do you what you were doing a few weeks ago. He ran some sims. He's been saying those sims. He's been implementing it into his game, and now we're starting to see it in the data. Right? It's not. Mm-hmm. He's made a sudden change. Things have changed. It's things are happening slowly in the background, and we're just starting to notice it now. Yeah. Okay. So I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be concerned. Uh, that he's made some kind of massive change to his game. I think the change has already happened and is slowly coming around. What we do is we fall back to more of these unlocked sims uh, and play a little bit closer to the unlocked stuff. Right, and then use partial exploits rather than full exploits. Yeah, Yeah. a uh, quick question. What yep. is the difference between uh, small blind V07 unlocked and small blind V06 unlocked? Uh, small blind VS seven unlocked, um, has, I think it's got the slightly different imposition sizes and it has no post slot advantage. Okay. Let me just look at this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this one. Yeah, so VS7s run at a higher precision. So um, it's it's slightly more accurate post slot and it has less post slot advantage, um, like baked into the tree. So it has, uh, so previously up until now, like we've been assuming that, you know, because you've studied the, the three open sizes and he hasn't, um, we've been giving you a slight post slot advantage. And that um, makes it into the preflop ranges as well, but now, now that that's not necessarily the case, uh, we've removed it. So from version sort of seven, six, and seven onwards for the um, for these unlocked sims, I'll be removing the postlop advantage that we uh, thought that we had, I mean, which we probably did have, um, mm-hmm. but now it'll be uh, more evident in the sims. So we'll be doing things slightly. Uh, slightly more closer to the original sort of GTO strat of, you know, in heads up, you open 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, and then none of this big crazy stuff. But we can still get away with some of this big crazy stuff with like 2.7, uh, 3.3, because he doesn't have multiple through bit sizes against us. So mm-hmm. if he's still if he's still adamant about using one through bit range, uh, one through bit size against anything that we do, um, then we can still get away with having the extra polarity by using um, open size and through bit sizes that aren't traditionally in GTO to begin with. Great. Okay. Any um, any other questions or concerns? Anything that you want me to look at? Would sorry, we just do a bit of a a short one today i'm sure you're tired after today's play yeah um, what we yeah, can do uh, yeah is is tomorrow night roughly this time we can start and go for maybe a couple hours go go and things in, in significant depth um and that will have given you some time to look through the preflop sims and any questions that you have you can ask me yeah great um real quick I, I pretty much only have one question. It's um, can you check his his uh, frequencies against my one quarter and one third pot C bets in three bet pots? Can we um so when we you... check it since since like the beginning of like two weeks ago? 
Yeah. So here, so, if you've got small, falls about a quarter of the time, hmm. uh, raise about 5% of the time. This is sort, okay, of what would, actually, this is sort of what you would expect in terms yeah, of just here. Um, so like if you bet one third pot, you should be folding a quarter of the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, if, I, if, I, if, if, if you bet quarter pot, then yeah, he's overfolding, but you're probably mm -hmm. betting more to one third and this is this is fine him I yeah mean, just, if, if anything he's probably not raising enough yeah i, I agree with that i think so um, you, can, you can probably just keep keep doing it when you've okay. got a bluff because then you just be able to see the turn very cheaply mm -hmm. without, um, without ever getting raised off your hand that's a good point that's a good point yeah okay great yeah that's it felt as though he was like never folding, but I think it's just card distribution over the past couple of days. He's just generally been hitting, hitting hands in, in three bet pots. All right, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I'm good to go. All right, yeah, you 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 get some rest because you've been playing for the for the full week, haven't you? Mm -hmm. First full week, first full week. Yeah. The win. Yeah. So you, you you probably you probably do need, need to get some rest. I would recommend get get a good get a good good full night's sleep today. Um, when, when are you playing next? Uh, Monday. So you have two, uh, two days probably. off. I might ask for it off, but probably not. We'll see though. We'll see how I feel. Yeah, and um, when when is your? You said that in April we needed some time off. When when is that happening? Um. So I've decided just to take individual days off as opposed to like a full week. Uh, it's probably going to, it's probably going to be, what's the date right now? It's seventh. It's probably going to be like the end of next week. It's going to be like, I'll probably ask for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, well, Saturday is already off, but like Thursday and Friday are probably going to be the days that I take off. And then, yeah, it's probably going to be it. It's just like a couple of days. It's for uh, to do my tax.